Well, while I'm writing all this down, how is everyone doing? How is everyone doing? Good. Good. Christian is doing good. Everyone else is dead. It's hot today. Yo, it is so hot. I am like way not about it. What? You don't like the, the heat? No, it's it's. It's fine, but like I compared to yesterday when it was down in the 60s, it's weird. I just need it to make a choice because yeah, I, I'm okay with it being warm. I just would like to know what the is up. You know, like, do I need to be in sweatpants or am I sweating? Sorry. Tyler, I was wondering where you were. I thought you may have died. Because I know this is obviously the most important thing in your life and you have nothing else to do, also known as every other teacher in the whole world. This is the only thing you have to do right now. So why are you not doing all my things right now? And you're like, you realize I have other stuff to do, right? Like I'm poor and I live with my parents or I don't live with my parents and I just, you know, all those things. Okay. Um, so tomorrow is test prep from five to seven, right? That's what I said. Yeah, cool, cool. I just, I don't know. Um, and I will, it's a Kahoot, so I'm just going to share the, share my screen with you guys and let y'all play on your whatever device, and then we're going to talk about it just like we would do in class, okay, so that um, it's 100 questions, I know that's a lot of questions, um, it covers all the material, so even if we don't finish it or, you know, you leave in the middle of the session, you can always go back and either look at the questions or play it with some friends via Zoom or study or whatever makes you happy. Um, I really like that the Kahoot allows you to go back and play it and do all that stuff. And I think you can even like, I think you could copy it and like edit it and like take out questions you knew and like only play play questions you didn't or like go back and be like, all right, I missed these questions or you could write the number down and then you could go back in the material and be like, this is what I didn't know. Now I know this, right? So like a lot of it, cause I use a lot of like, matching and like which of these does not belong which means you have to know everything that does so that you can tell me what doesn't so um the kahoot seems really long but i really think it's beneficial and it's better than just you know writing it all out i just feel like that's a lot and i don't want to write it all out whatever okay so does anyone have any questions before we start um did you say this is going to be one of the hardest tests like this is the hardest test okay yes not to, I mean, I want to scare you a little because I would rather you overstudy and kill the test than understudy. Um, this is just the hardest because it's a lot of physiology. And so we're talking about calcium and what happens if the calcium does this and what happens if, you know what I'm saying? What happens if these things change? And then um, that makes it um, really challenging because they're going to ask you a physiology question. And if you don't understand, then you can't tell me what happens when it changes. So that's why I think that that video is stunner because that's telling you why everything is happening. And so if you can tell me why and you can run me through the whole process, um, that's something that Ms. Burns, who was last year, you have to be able to tell me what like the process is from start to finish, like everything, like from the initial uh, um, somatic motor neuron stimulation all the way through like um, depolarization, repolarization, everything. So if you can do that on a piece of paper, gold. Cool. Oh, I also added a, um, I don't know if you've been to the website. It's like I live on the website. Um, I put a little feeling low. I don't know what it's called. Um, the little link that goes to counseling services, I think they're still doing um, via Zoom counseling services. It's free. It's part of your tuition. Um, I think you can call or use a, the online link to make an appointment. I know that extroverts like me are having a lot of trouble being alone so much. Um, so there's no shame in it. Your, uh, I, all my friends who, they're like, you go to therapy? I'm like, oh yeah, I love going to therapy. It makes me feel so much better. Anyway, that link is on the website in case you need it or you know someone else that needs it. Um, Session 13, um, Angel asked, is what I went over on the YouTube video for yesterday. So what I posted last night. 
Okay, so we're gonna talk about excitation, contraction, coupling. I know that that sounds like kind of like a scary thing, but it's just talking about how we're exciting, right? So we're using that somatic motor neuron to excite the muscle fiber and then therefore it contracts. And it's the coupling of those things of the, um, of the somatic motor neuron being giving the excitement and it's contracting at the same time. So it's just the coupling of those things together. So I, I know that sounds kind of scary, it's not. Okay, right, so excitation is the event that transmits the action potential along the sarcolemma, right? We talked about, do we know what an action potential is? We have an idea what an action potential is. If, if no, just tell me no and I'll tell you what it is. But if you do, no. Looks like we don't know. So an action potential is when we reach that threshold, we reach a threshold of um, excitation, right? Our, trying not to get ahead of myself. We reach the um, resting membrane potentials at motor end plate, right? So we talked in the last session, so there's like a, a number you need to know, it's, called, it's negative 70 millivolts is the resting membrane potential of um, the sarcolemma. And so once we reach above that threshold, Right, we can transmit an action potential, which is pretty much us being like, it's time to contract. We have enough energy. It's almost like in a chemical reaction when we reach that activation energy. Okay. And then what's the sarcolemma? Christian, you are muted. You tried. What releases the uh, ions, right? No, that's no. the sarcoplasm reticulum. Anyone else? Sarcolemma? Is it the smallest contractile unit? That is the sarcomere. I know all the words sound the same. The sarcolemma is pretty much just the plasma membrane for the muscle fiber. Okay. Okay, so, and then the contraction is the sliding of the myofilaments, right? Okay, so then, oh. Really quick, I have a question. Yes. Is there a document uh, uploaded on this? Yeah, for it's 14. Yeah, it's 14.1. If you pulled up the web page like 10 minutes ago, I would refresh it. Okay. Yeah? What's wrong? It sounds sorry, like we yeah. died. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. It, I, I had to put it up there. Okay, so an action potential is propagated along the sarcolemma, so it goes along that membrane, and then it goes down the T-tubules. Do we know what a T-tubule is? Okay, let us look at this wonderful thing. Okay, okay. so pretty much this, um, whatever color this is, this thing is your sarcolemma, right? It's the membrane that surrounds those muscle fibers. Okay, and then where is that thing? Okay, okay, now we'll go back. Okay. Right, so this big yellow bulb, right? This is your somatic motor neuron, right? This is your axon terminal because it's the end of the axon, okay? These red things under it is our muscle fibers. The little um, yellow dot is the, is what? This little yellow dot that's like being, that's going everywhere. Mm -hmm. Calcium, okay. Are we okay? Did we die? Okay, we're dying. Okay. This blue piece is your T tubule. And then this um, purple piece is your sarcoplasm reticulum. So the let's get my little drawing out. Fun for me. Cool. So we have an electrical impulse that comes down this axon terminal. Okay. And then in these little circles, right? They're called uh, secretory vesicles, right? We have these little, and they're purple uh, later, we have these little triangles and they're acetylcholine, right? Which is a hormone. All right, so this, it transmits all the way down. Okay, it transmits all the way down. Can this please go away? Can y'all even see this little thing with your names on it? Uh, what thing? Okay, perfect. 
I'm sorry. This is really messing me in my head. Okay, so it comes down and then the acetylcholine comes out of here and attaches, right? This is an acetylcholine. It attaches to these binding sites, okay? And so then, right, because this is the synaptic cleft, okay? Right? Oh, there are these little kids riding tricycles and I literally, my heart is broken. So that's really, really pretty cute. And then the other little kid is pushing the stroller. So, you know, there's that. Anywho, synaptic cleft. This is the, the blue piece is the T-tubule, okay? And then the purple piece is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So this action potential is gonna come down. It's gonna go through the synaptic cleft. And so it's an electrical impulse. So in the video, it's shown as light. So then this electrical impulse goes down the T tubules, okay? So that it can get to all the pieces in the muscle and spread, okay? Because otherwise it's having to go like from here to here and here to here and here to here. And we don't want that, that's not very efficient. So we go down this T tubule, which allows us to transmit that, that electrical impulse, which then tells all the sarcoplasmic reticulum around it, release calcium, like it's our time. Like war has begun, okay? And then we release calcium, which allows us to do all these bits in the muscle. Okay, so that's a T tubule. Da, 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 da. Questions about what I just said? Are we? Do we just feel like we're gonna die? One. Five. Keely's, Keely's not dying. Gonzalez is dying. Marley's dying. Okay, it's going to be okay. I know that y'all have a lot of things to do. When you do go watch that other video, you are not going to be confused. So, right, and it's so an action potential is propagated down the sarcoma and then down that T tubule where voltage gets sensitive proteins, stimulate that calcium to release SR means sarcoplasmic reticulum, right? Release down the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay. So calcium release leads to that contraction because it binds to troponin, which allows it to move tropomyosin so that that myosin head can come up and bind to actin, okay? So your action potential is brief and ends before contraction is even seen. So they're like lightning fast here because they're, they happen every time you blink, every time you move, every time you wiggle your little toe. Um, this allows you to contract your muscles. And so they're really, really fast. Okay, so if we have low intracellular calcium, right? So that means we don't have calcium in the muscle cell, right? The myosin head can't attach to actin because tropomyosin blocks that active site, right? We need that high calcium, intra high intracellular calcium, also known as calcium is just in the cell binding to troponin. Does that make sense? Yes, cool, cool. So then the muscle fiber is relaxed because if our myosin head can't attach to actin, there's no contraction going on, right? We're relaxed, we're very chill. Okay, so voltage sensitive proteins in the T tubules change shape, right? So we talked about like way long ago that shape determines function. So when the shape changes, the function changes, okay? So the voltage sensitive proteins in the T tubules, when they get that voltage, when they get that action potential, they change shape and allow the sarcoplasm reticulum to release calcium, right? So maybe they were like this and then they get voltage and they open, okay? And, they, and that allows the calcium to come out of the sarcoplasm reticulum into the cytosol, right? So just into the, where the muscle fibers are. So at high intracellular calcium levels, calcium binds to troponin, which is what we're looking for. And therefore, and therefore troponin changes shape and binds to calcium and then allows it to move tropomyosin out of the way, right? So now our binding site is very exposed, okay? And then myosin is allowed to come up and bind to that, right? Forming the cross bridge, right? This little cross bridge piece, okay? And so then it can, then it can start to contract. Right, and so when that happens, cycling is initiated just because literally they happen in a cycle because it just, um, where's the video? 
right? So these heads will attach to different binding sites every time because they're gonna reach up from that cross bridge ratchet and then be in a different spot and move and do it again. So it's a cycle because they keep doing it to different actins, right? So it'll, this one will go here and this one will go here because they're moving closer and closer together. So it ends up being a cycle of it just like doing it back and forth and back and forth. Does that make sense? I know it looks funny. Okay, so um, right where the sarcomere shortens and therefore the muscle is contracting because the cycling is happening where those myosin heads are going up and attaching to different actin sites because the calcium allows the troponin to bind and move the tropomyosin so all the sites are open for binding. Questions, hopes, dreams, no shame. I know that this is a really rough um, subject because it's a challenge. On a side note, this is my AirPods case. I got it recently. I think it is pretty cute. So that's fine. Also, in the session that I recorded last night, I was pretty tired and I definitely um, edited it a lot because I like took breaks in the middle of the, <laughs> the session, which is fine. It's fine, we're all struggling. Okay, so when the nerve, when nervous stimulation ceases, so right when that somatic motor neuron stops sending electrical impulses, so it stops generating those action potentials, calcium is pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and contraction stops, right? Because we need calcium to move that so that we can have active or we can have exposed binding sites, okay? So when the, so calcium is pretty much just recycled. So it binds to troponin and then it goes back into the cyclophosphate reticulum and then it binds and then it goes back, okay? Okay, so this is what we're talking about cross bridge. Hey Christian, what, you know, I'm just gonna mute you, sorry. Because I think there's like background noise and <laughs> so there's background noise and I keep like hearing it in my ear. Um, so I muted you, I'm sorry. Get wrecked. All right, so the cross bridge cycling. <laughs> oh God, some people laugh at that, that makes me happy. All right, so the cross bridge formation occurs, okay? We're making this, right? So myosin and actin, okay? Can't mute your it's like, okay. Cross bridge formation, right? And then we do the power stroke where we pretty much ratchet, okay? We're ratcheting, okay? And then the cross bridge detaches, okay? And then it's called the cocking of the myosin head, right? Because we've moved here, and so then we're gonna redo it again. So let's watch this is it right here okay cool cool all right so watch this and now oh you know what i can make it slower i was like it's gonna be really fast ha ah, can make it slower all right whoa so bad in my ears okay so we form that cross bridge i may have made it too slow i did not mean to okay so then it ratchets right is that what i said it's called power stroke it power strokes also known as ratcheting and then it detaches and then that cocks back and then it comes up and forms another one, right? So that's just your cycle is what this is doing right now. Does that make sense to everyone? A lot of this seems really like complicated. I'm sorry. A lot of this seems really complicated and scary until you watch it in the video and you're like, oh, that makes sense. Like I, like I can understand that, but it like seems really crazy when we're like, the cycling of the myosin and the, okay. This is so funny, this kid is killing me. Okay, so this is just me telling you exactly what each step is. So the cross bridge formation where high energy myosin binds to the active site because we're gonna look at it later is that ATP allows that myosin to reach up and grab, right? It's pretty much taking a leap of faith. Um, if you watch those, they're not John Green videos, whatever his brother's name is. He does like this, it's a love story between actin and myosin and they're always like, they want to be bound to each other, but they can't be because of tropomyosin and calcium. It's like, this, it's all that it's gay, but, or it's weird. But, um, so it's a high energy state because the ATP allows it to take that leap of faith. All right. And so then the power stroke or the working stroke is when the myosin head pivots and pulls the filament towards the M line, right? The ratcheting. And then we detach, the ATP detaches the myosin head, right? If it needed energy to go up, it's going to need energy to come down. Okay. And then we like detach the cross bridge, right? And then the myosin head cocks. So hydrolysis just means what? Breaking apart with water. Boom, awesome. Okay, so the hydrolysis of ATP, so we use water to break up ATP 
and allow that myosin head to cock back up and become high energy again. And so now it can be used for another power stroke. Yes. So all everything I just said is just what we just watched in the video. It's just like very detailed. Okay. I'm going to give you another second to write because I know a lot of you are writing and all the keys are messed up, I guess, so I will fix that. <laughs> I have to meet on Zoom for an online project. Um, I wanted that. Okay, so okay, so the process will repeat. The cycling will repeat as long as calcium is present because we need calcium to make that contraction, and we need ATP because we need that ATP for that myosin head to be able to reach up and grab the actin. So those two things are super super important. Right, contraction does not happen without these things. All right, so then, okay, so then when your neural impulse stops, the calcium ions are no longer released. So this is just saying when the somatic motor neuron stops sending those electrical impulses and creating action potentials, the calcium is no longer released. Okay, yes, the calcium is no longer flooded, right? It's not flooded into the cell from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. ATP is then actively used to transport calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Uh, I don't remember if it was a bonus question or what it is. It was always like, well, how does AT or how does calcium get back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum? And people are like, I don't know. Or it's like label or name five things that ATP does in muscle contraction, right? And so it's like myosin head cocking, myosin head detachment, um, and then transporting back into the sarcoma transporting calcium back into the sarcoma and I think we'll hit a couple other things soon. So this is super, super important that ATP brings back, it pretty much like nannies it back into the sarcoma or sarcoplasmic reticulum. Um, I actually, that is a good question. Heather asked if there's going to be extra credit on the exam. I feel like there will be just because he usually does it. That is a good question. I can email him and ask him and let you know. There wasn't on the lab practical, so I was just curious if there would be. Yeah. Was there usually extra credit on lab practical? Yes. Mm. Um, I, I'm gonna assume so because this is the hardest test and it's your first one online and you're great and the grades might not be phenomenal. Um, but I will email him and ask. Okay, so then without any calcium ions, the cross bridge cannot reattach because the binding site is not exposed, right? So tropomyosin is covering that binding site now. And so without calcium, we can't create a cross bridge. It like, it pretty much like goes up and misses and it misses because there's no active site for it to bind to, okay? So then the membrane potential is reestablished by pumping ions along the T-tubules and the sarcolemma. So the whole thing that drives this, I don't know, I'm kind of being weird. The whole thing that drives this is the fact that the um, resting membrane potential is changed from negative 70 millivolts, right? Because of the movement of calcium and um, potassium and sodium. There's a lot going on, right? And so when we, the membrane potential is reestablished, so it goes back to that negative 70 millivolts, right? We're no longer in a place where we can have action potentials because we're pretty much around normal because we're pumping everything back where it's supposed to go. Right, we're going back into homeostasis. Thoughts, feelings, hopes, dreams, comments, questions, concerns. 
example. Okay, so. Okay, so to review in like order. So the neural impulse comes down the somatic motor neuron to the motor neuron axon. Okay, so we go from a neural impulse right to your brain to the somatic motor neuron and then the motor neuron axon. So the very specific axon that touches whatever muscle we're talking about. And then that chemical is released, right? Your acetylcholine messenger comes out. Your sarcolemma is depolarized, right? Which allows an action potential to be generated because anytime we're talking about polarization or de depolarization or repolarization, we're talking about changing that membrane potential. And so something is gonna happen, okay? So the sarcolemma is depolarized, right? And action potential is generated, okay? So then the action potential goes down the T-tubule which allows the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium, the sarcoplasm, and then, and then we go to the, and then the sarcoplasm gets polarized or depolarized. The sarcomere starts to shorten, right? And the actin and myosin filaments expose binding sites. So this is kind of like our order of what's happening. I'll let y'all write that down. On number six, what does that say? It says sarcoplasmic SR, so sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium. Sorry. So for seven and eight, is that just saying where like the calcium's going, like the the path it's taking to get to the actin myofilament head? Um. So sorry, was it? So then I would say this. I would say like it's depolarization. So right. So I'm trying to figure out. I'm going to say that's where everything's going on, right? So the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium into the sarcoplasm, and then it goes into the sarcomere, which allows actin. And yes, so yes to your question. Okay. Let me know when y'all are ready to continue. It's almost like even though everything is online, I know I can stay up later because everything is online and therefore I get less sleep. You see? Yes, cool. Agreed. It's like I don't have to get up. Like I don't have to be presentable or like showered or not in my pajamas. So yeah, it's not good. I'm not good at this. All right. So we're going to talk about a homeostatic imbalance called rigor mortis. Does anyone know what this is? Like already? Does anyone watch like crime shows and stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. So humans. Okay, so this is when um, we'll just talk about it. All right, so this is three to four hours post-mortem. So three to four hours after death, right? 12 hours is your peak. So it pretty much it's a stiffness or a contraction of lots of different kinds of muscles um, in your body after you die. And this is because the calcium can't be pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Does anyone want to tell me why it can't be pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum? Because there's no ATP because you're dead. Ugh. Yes. Yes. Okay. So there's no ATP. We're not making any ATP. Our cells aren't living. We're not doing any more processes. Nothing is happening. And so that calcium remains there. And so then, and then it stays. And so we can continue to have those bindings. So A, the calcium can't be pumped out. And B, we don't have ATP to unbind the myosin and actin. So we stay contracted, however it is, okay? So this results in a cross bridge formation and actin and myosin stay bound, right? So because this is an ATP's role, is one of its roles is the detachment of the bridge. So without ATP, when we die, this happens a lot. Isn't that freaky? 
Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, you're super weird. It's fine. I don't know if you know, but what happens when you have a cramp? Because, like, your muscle is, like, contracted, but why can't it, like, relax? It's probably just, like, an isometric contraction. So it's probably just contracting, and it's not moving, like, necessarily in length. Um, and I think that has a lot to do. So you have these things called you know, like muscle spindle fibers that get really um, excited, which causes the muscle to tighten up and cramp. Oh. Oh yeah, Christian. Do you, are you telling me you know about women? Because you are. You, huh? Women? How how does the cramp have to do with women? Mm. I get cramps. Not a woman. It's fine. That's fine. But yeah. It's fine. Thank you, Christian. I don't, I can't vouch for that information because I don't know. I'm sure he's right. But good question. I like it. From what I remember, I think that's it. Okay. So then, <laughs> okay. So for your whole muscle, the same principle applies to contract one fiber as it does the whole muscle. So when the contraction produces muscle tension, right, the forces exerted on the load or object can be moved. So right when that muscle creates tension, we can do things like pick up our phone or squat really heavy weight or um, lay on the ground, okay? So, um, so everything that happens to one muscle will happen to the whole muscle as long as that, is, that muscle is being stimulated that way. All right, so then we're gonna talk about those kinds of contractions. So isometric means there's no shortening of the fibers, right? Um, this happened, the tension doesn't exceed the load. So this is when you're trying to pick up something really, really heavy and you can't, right? When you like, <laughs> and then nothing, okay? However, isotonic is when the muscle does shorten. So we are able to make that full contraction and the tension exceeds the load, right? So this is when we can pick something up, okay? So the force and duration of any contraction depends on the stimulus and the intensity. So we're talking about how long and how much um, stimulation that muscle is getting to continue to contract. So maybe it's for a split second or maybe it's for a long time, right? When we're holding a plank, the force and duration of your contraction is gonna be much, much longer because you're holding it, right? And so that stimulus is gonna continue. Okay, so then each muscle is served by a motor nerve, right, which contains the axon, right, that axon head and the axon terminal of up to hundreds of motor neurons, okay? The axons branch into axon terminals, each of which forms that neuromuscular junction with a single muscle fiber. So what that means is this. Hey, so many little silly buttons. Okay, so this really looks oh, very blurry. Okay, so no. I want it to be not as blurry, please. Okay, this is better. Right, so this is the whole muscle, okay? And then these are your, this is a motor, this is a somatic motor neuron, right? We, you'll learn about myelin sheets and all that jazz. So each of these, right, is an, ax, or is an axon and then it ends up going to an axon terminal, which touches a muscle. So each, every individual fiber and every individual thing has its own axon terminal which has its own neuromuscular junction. So every single little piece has to be touched so that it can be stimulated. Does that make sense? 
So they all form one of these, oh, they all form, right? So each one of those forms one of these, right? And it touches a muscle. So that's literally all that that paragraph is saying is that we have to innervate these um, muscles so that they can be, so that they have an action so they can be stimulated. So a motor unit is the motor neuron and all the fibers it supplies. So it's whatever neuron and every single fiber that it supplies an electrical impulse to. So motor unit is just that whole bundle that um, it innervates. So the smaller the number of fibers, the greater the uh, fine control. So the less number of fibers is how is the very small control. So your hands and your eyes where it's very minute movement does a lot is that fine control. Whereas your quad muscle has a lot less um, has a lot, it's not as fine control because it's just one big muscle and there's lots of big fibers there, okay? And we're just doing one thing, right? So a muscle fiber from a motor unit are spread throughout the whole muscle so that the stimulation of a single motor unit can cause only a weak contraction. So what, I, so what that's saying is I don't have to send a signal to every single fiber, right, that's, that innervates a muscle. I can send it to a couple, right? Maybe I just send it to my calf. Maybe, maybe there's certain parts of my calf that I want to stimulate, and I'm only sending it to a couple muscle fibers, so it's a pretty weak contraction, right? So it's pretty, it's pretty light, whereas if I'm doing calf raises, I'm doing the whole thing. I want whole gains and we're going really hard and we want all the muscle to be contracting and be a really strong contraction. Does that make sense? Kind of. Cool. Okay. So then a muscle twitch is the simplest contraction resulting from a muscle fiber's response to a single action potential. So it's just one contraction from, a, from one action potential. And it has three phases, okay? So it has a latent period, a period of contraction, and then a period of relaxation. So in our latent period, okay, we do this excitation contraction coupling, right? Where there's no muscle tension, okay? And then we have a period of contraction where the tension increases and we form a cross bridge. And then there's a period of relaxation where the calcium re-enters the sarcoplasm, sarcoplasmic reticulum and the tension declines to zero. So we have, we're chilling, we're contracting, and then we go back and we relax. So muscle contracts faster than relaxes, which I think is cool. Healy, how's it going taking A and P one and two right now? What did you say? Well, how's it going taking A and P one and two right now? Yeah, really good. <laughs> okay, just checking in on uh, you. I don't know. I'm. I really wanted to have three A's in A and P one and two and micro, but like, and I was. I had all A's, and I don't know if I'm going. I might be like on the line for A's and B's, and I'm really upset, but like a lot of people have it worse than me, so I don't have much to complain about. 
I feel you, but I applaud you. That is a lot. I'm definitely not doing as much work as I was doing because it's hard to like focus at home, but yeah. I, I feel you. Okay, just checking in on you. Don't take AMP one and two at the same time. I mean, she's totally capable, but also, whoa. okay. So there's the Do principle not of it ever. No. Okay, so the all or none principle. So once a muscle stimulant fiber is, once a muscle fiber is stimulated, it contracts completely. Right? There's no like, well, it's not indecisive. It's going, it's going to contract if it's stimulated and it reaches that threshold. Right? So there are no partial contractions. Okay. We're talking about a muscle cell or a motor unit or the whole muscle, so all of it. So if we gen if one um, action potential is generated and we get one muscle twitch and we hit the right threshold, it's going to contract. Period. Okay, we've hit it. It's an it's literally the all or none principle, which I think is pretty um, indicative of what it does. Okay, so the whole muscle does have a graded or varying degree of contraction. Right, so the amount of force produces actually tells us how many motor units are called to action. So that sentence is telling you when you, you know, when you're like going to pick something heavy up and you kind of like, you, you walk up to, over to it, you kind of like pull on it, right? You kind of just like, oh, I could, you know, I could do this, whatever. Or when you're holding a bar, right, at the gym, like maybe it's on your shoulders or maybe you're like bench pressing and you kind of like, you kind of like hold it up there for a second and you kind of like, oh, you know, you're just kind of like feeling it out. So literally that is this, it's talking about your body is sensing what we're talking about, right? Even if it's just this cup, okay? Even if it's just this cup and I take it and I kind of like touch it and I don't pick it up and I'm just kind of like sensing how it is, that's telling my, my brain is telling, that's telling my brain how many muscle fibers I'm gonna need to pick this up. So it's telling me how many motor units are gonna be called to action. So this, I know exactly how much motor units to be called to action, you know what I'm saying? Um, there, have, has your friend ever like given you something that you thought was way heavier than it was, right? And you're like, and your arm shoots up or a vice versa. Maybe you're carrying a couple, maybe someone hands you some books and you're like not ready for how heavy they are and you do this, right? That's because you did not have enough motor units called to action because you were not, what you thought was not how heavy it was. Does that make sense? Kind of. Okay, cool. I think that's cool that your brain can like literally like sense like, oh yeah, no, 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 this is right. Okay, about this many. All right, I got this. I can do this, All right? Especially if you pick something up a couple times, right? Especially if it's really heavy and then your, um, and then you get your muscle fibers get strong, like you get a better read on it every time you pick it up because you know exactly what you need and that didn't work and that didn't work. Okay, this is how many fibers. Okay, so. So a graded muscle response is normal smooth, normal muscle contractions are smooth and strength varies, right? So normally my muscle contraction is this, right? It's pretty smooth. It could be really like shaky or it could be really bad, right? Maybe if you've done like 25 reps or something, you're like shaking and it's not so smooth, okay? Right, and so your normal um, responses are graded by the frequency, right? How fast we're going, the frequency of stimulation, like go, 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 and the strength of the stimulation, okay? Is how like how much your um, how strong the signal is, okay? Um, you know that you do better in a workout when your brain is like, we can do this, like let's go, and you do more reps. So the the strength of that stimulation is much much stronger, and it's forcing you to do more, and you can do more, and you and then you have a, a larger graded response, okay? So the muscle response to changes due to stimulus and due to frequency. Okay, so if we stimulate it more, it'll do it. And if we stimulate it, if we stimulate it harder, like in greater quantities, or if we stimulate it faster. Okay. Thoughts, feelings, comments, questions, concerns? No. Okay. Okay. All right. So. A single stimulus will result in a single contractile response, also known as a muscle twitch, right? We said muscle twitch is one action potential that allows one contractile unit, right? It's one contraction. I like to try and remember this as like the leg twitch in the middle of the night, you know what I'm saying? 
I don't think that that's actually what this is, but you know, like when you're falling asleep and your leg like jerks once and it just like does it once, it's like a single contractile unit and you're just not like, oh, okay, I'm good. Okay, I swear that must done that stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah, fam, we got this. Let's do it. Okay, so then there's something called temporal summation, right, or wave summation. It's when two stimuluses are received in rapid succession and so they end up adding together, right? So if we get one and then the other, they add together. So instead of going up and then down, it'll go up and then up. And you know what I'm saying? Like they'll happen. I'll show you. There's a picture on the next page. Or maybe it's like right under this. Oh, it's, it's like right under this. It's right here. So wave summation or temporal summation, right? So we get that first one and then we get a second one and then we get a third one. Okay, so these are the, so the twitch, remember, is just one, okay? And then we're gonna talk about these again. Okay, so muscle fibers do not have, okay, they don't have time to completely relax between stimulus, which is what I just said, right? Which is why we do this, okay? So the twitches increase the force with each stimulus, so. Ooh, where's my mouse? So this is our first stimulus and it's maybe these are all the same like intensity, right? But because they're happening back to back to back, they're going to be stronger and stronger and stronger. So first one, stronger, stronger. Does that make sense? Like they continue to grade up as we go. Okay, because it's happening like very, very, very fast. So additional calcium is released when the, stec the second stimulus stimulates the more shortening, right? So we get more calcium. So more things are unbound. So there's more bridges going on and more cycling. So that produces a smooth, continuous contraction that adds up, right? So adding up, also known as summation, right? For you math humans. Okay, further increase in stimulus frequency causes muscle progression to sustain quivering contraction referred to as unfused tetanus or incomplete, which is this, okay? Okay, so we're getting more than, the, than a couple, so we're getting a lot, so it's kind of quivering because it's continuing to contract and it's continuing to get um, an increased tension, but it's, um, Sorry, it's very distracting. Okay. It's continuing to increase in force, right? But it's quivering because there's, it's doing so much of it and it's doing it so fast, right? So these are much quicker together than the other one is one, two, three. This one's one, two, three. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty fast. So it's a quivering. Can you hear him? I know I'm talking a lot, but like I'm not talking on the phone. I don't remember what session that was. I could not find to edit it out, but I was upset about the people in the engineering building. So I am sorry for that. Okay. Okay, so the stimulus, <laughs> I can't. Okay, stimulus increases, increases frequency, right? Muscle tension reaches. I want to have to move away. I can do this, I can do this. Okay, so the stimuli, the stimuli frequency increase, and so muscle tension then reaches a maximum, referred to as a fused or complete tendon. So this is our maximum, okay? So single, we got one, two, three, right? So stuff's happening, and then we have, okay, we're going, there's a lot more going on, and then we have fused tetanus or complete, right, which is our maximum, maximum tension. Okay, so it's fused because it's one long sustained contraction plateau, right? This is a plateau. Okay, muscle fatigue really results from prolonged contraction. You know that if you've ever been to the gym a bunch or if you've ever like tried to do like 
have you ever do like sets till failure, right? When you do like push-ups, have you ever done like sets till failure? You know that after prolonged contraction of lots and lots of frequency and stimulus, that your muscles are fatigued. Okay. So muscle response changes in result to stimulus strength, right? So if our strength increases, right, then our stimulus increases. Okay, so recruitment is when multiple motor units, right, are summated, right, which means we just add them together. So lots of motor units are summated to send to many fibers, okay? So it's pretty precise. So we're recruiting a lot of fibers to go on, okay? And then we have types of stimulus. So we have sub-threshold stimulus, threshold stimulus, and then max stimulus. I'll just do this one, okay? So in sub-threshold, right? So we're below the threshold. We don't have any contraction because we haven't met that threshold yet. And so therefore the strength is that it's not strong, right? Because we haven't met that threshold yet to be able to do that contraction. Does that make sense? Okay. And then we have threshold stimulus, which is where the strength is strong enough so it overcomes the threshold. And so there is a contraction. It's our first contraction because we finally reached enough of that stimulus that we can overcome the, con we can overcome the threshold. And then we have max stimulus, which is where we're our strongest and this is our maximum contractile force. All right, I wanna say that this is like when moms push cars off babies maximum stimulus so we're almost at the end of the packet and after we finish the packet i'm just going to kind of show you some videos on things from this session and from the session um, that we are not going to end up having uh. My watch is always like, Natalie, you should breathe. And I'm like, I really don't feel like stressed. I feel like it knows, you know? It doesn't know my heart rate, but it's not that high. It's spying on me. Okay. So then recruitment works on something called the size principle, which is where fibers, the smallest fibers are recruited first. And then when the largest fibers are recruited, the intensity increases, right? So when we recruit a lot of really big fibers, this is our most powerful, right? But we're initially gonna start with smaller fibers because we don't want to expend a lot of energy if we don't need it, right? So if I'm picking up my phone and I don't know how much my phone weighs, I'm gonna pick it up and maybe, um, and maybe I succeed because it's not that heavy. So I've only recruited the smallest fibers and I ended up doing the work that I needed. However, if I recruited a bunch of fibers, like if I recruited my whole bicep and my tricep and my, and my deltoid, then that would be wasting energy because I've done the biggest fibers that I have and I didn't need that, right? I've wasted energy doing that. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, all right, so we contract some fibers while other ones rest if we don't need them to prevent fatigue and to make sure we're not um, using ATP when we don't need it, right? Our body's all about efficiency and, um, and making sure that we're maintaining and keeping that ATP because it doesn't know that like we live in the 20th, 21st, right? We live in the 21st century. And so it doesn't know that we're like chilling and there's snacks in our fridge all the time. It thinks that there are bears everywhere and that we always need maximum amount of energy to always run away from all the bears, okay? Which is why when you're running and your body is like, and you're like two minutes in and you're like, yo, I'm way capable of this. And you're like, your brain is like, stop running. And you're like, no, 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 no. Like I can, and your brain's like, literally stop running. And you're like, your brain doesn't know that you're running on a treadmill or you're running outside for funsies. It thinks that like you're using all this energy up that you need to run for bears. So your brain is like, do not waste this. I worked so hard, right? So like, I guess that makes sense. So you can like empathize with your brain. Can use fun facts. I thought that was interesting that it's like your brain doesn't know you're running for fun. 
your brain like thinks that everything is horrible anyway it's like fear in um inside out it's like everything's horrible all the horrible things are gonna happen okay so muscle tone right is constant and slightly contracted in all the muscles so we talked about how muscle tone has a lot to do with um like your posture right so if you're sitting up really straight and you don't notice it or even if you're like curved right or if you're holding your head up there's a lot of muscle tone that's going on that's constantly allowing your head and your neck to stay standing up straight so um when babies have issues right um and they end up being diagnosed with something like muscular dystrophy or whatnot a lot of the first signs are that they can't hold their head up right so their muscle tone stops because they're not able to hold their head up and have that constant muscle tone and contraction okay so this is comes from your spinal reflexes your spinal reflexes tell your brain to keep your muscles in your neck taut and toned so that you can keep your head up right so this is due to spinal reflexes. so groups of motor units are alternately activated in response from input from stretch receptors and muscles so there's actually a lot of stretch receptors in your stomach and the stretch receptors, when there's a lot of food in there, that's what tells you that you're full, right? The stretch receptors in your stomach will stretch because literally the, you stretch the muscle because you've put a lot of food in it. And so that tells you you're full. So groups of motor units are activated in response from stretch receptors and muscles. So um, if the stretch receptors in your neck are being stimulated, right, we're going to alternately use different muscles to keep our head and our neck up, okay? And things of this nature. So keep, this keeps muscles firm, healthy, and ready to respond. Okay, that muscle tone. All right, so I'm gonna show you some videos and then you can all laugh on your own time. How about that? Okay, let's see. All right, so muscle, neuromuscular junction, okay, the neuron. I don't really like that picture at all, actually. I like this better. Okay, right, so axon terminal, okay, and then these little purple bits are the acetylcholine. It goes into these acetylcholine receptors in the synaptic cleft, okay? And then these little U's are the junctional folds in the synaptic cleft, okay? Right? Here's the T-tubule and the sarcoplasmic reticulum, okay? Let's see. Oh, you know what? I was going to show you that. We don't need to know that. Okay, done. This video is amazing. Honestly, just watch it all the time because if you watch it a bunch, it will help you. Okay, there's so many other stupid things. Okay. okay, so this this video, this organismal level video tells you a lot about muscle twitches. So there's like a so it's it's showing you what's happening as the tension increases, right? And then we start to relax because we're the sarcomere is not getting short again. Okay, he's gonna talk some more. And then let's see. Okay, so this is gonna show you temporal summation. Oh, oh that's fine, I guess. Right, so stimulus, stimulus, stimulus. Right, and they're going up, okay. Just gonna talk for a minute. Right, so tetanus, so this is that maximum force, right? So we're getting all of those, we're getting all of those firings really, really rapidly. And so it ends up just being a max force, okay? Right, boom. Right, and it's that plateau. Right, and so then muscle fatigue is at the end when we can no longer contract the muscle anymore and it's trying to relax and it's trying to chill so that it can resupply itself, right? So this is what we're talking about, about so the, it iterates the whole thing. And so a size principle or the all or none principle. So if we needed the whole, so say this is your quad muscle, if we needed the whole quad muscle, right, the whole thing would shorten and our size principle would tell us that we needed all the fibers we were doing because we're doing one rep max or something. And the whole thing is going to contract really hard and really fast. Okay. Oh, it's Corgi. There's Corgi in this video. Okay, so here's your size principle, right? So we use the small ones first, and then we get the medium fibers, right? We have small and medium fibers, and then we have small, medium. I know these are kind of weird that they're like bouncing and they have tongues, but um, right, so first we use the little fibers, and then we use the little fibers and the, and the medium fibers, and then we use the little fibers, the medium fibers, and the big fibers, and we're using all of that to increase this tension. Let's 
needs to. So this video is really good for the tension bits, especially if you're having trouble with those. This one does a lot of good stuff about ATP and when it does and when it moves and all this jazz. Let's see. Okay, this stuff, this muscle fiber types, where is this not it? These types, this is in the next, the next session, okay? And it's telling me, so loud, I don't know. It's in the next session. So if anything, I would watch this video or I would really um, look at the muscle fiber types because you have aerobic types and you have non-aerobic types and that stuff's super important, okay? And they tell you, and this video, this is in the playlist on the YouTube um, and it tells you about how it recruits and when it recruits and all of it so and it tells you like for aerobic and anaerobic so i think those are really really good videos um all of it's in here um yes i think that might be all i have for you except for that i don't know how to stop because i don't know where i put my little thing ah i found it okay all right everybody unmute how are we doing questions comments concerns how are we feeling? So at the beginning, you said we need to know like the whole process, like from start to finish. Is that kind of, is that what we went over today? Like step by step? Is that no? No. Um, I think we go over we went over that in the session I recorded that's on YouTube. Okay. So 13 or whatever, or 14 if four or whatever. The last, the last one, the one that's on YouTube that no one was there for, and it was just me. Um, watch that one, and the steps are in the um, that video that I think is really good that I had y'all watch at the beginning, right? It just like kind of tells you everything that's happening. Um, okay. And they used to, I don't know if they do anymore. They used to put up like a PowerPoint of like like pretty crude drawings of um of what's happening. Also, there's that um oh, I don't have my screen anymore. There's also that study guide that I put on my website. That's literally, it's four parts. Um, and if nothing else, I would read the part about this uh, for the session we didn't get to. And um, I think that has everything listed in order, Marley. Like, I think it has like very specifically what's listed in order and where it and everything. Cool, thank you. Neat. Other hopes and dreams, feelings, questions? No. no okay well um i will fix the keys online and i will make sure that they are all right and everything and then i will put this on youtube probably in the next like hour or something um please let me know if you have any questions test prep is tomorrow it is a kahoot it is on the website now um so if you want if you get a wild hair and you want to do that you can if not don't matter we're going to do it tomorrow um, and then I will re I will still record the test prep and put it on the YouTube um, so that if you want to go back and like look at the explanations or whatever, you can do that. Anything else, friends? All right, go laugh on your own time. I will get to the bottom of this. Oh, apparently, oh yeah, thank you, Christian. Christian is telling me to tell everyone there's a poke a muscle game on my website and it literally makes you like put the muscles where they go. Um, and it's just like a fun little online game, especially for the lab practical and the lab portion because muscles are pretty hard because it looks like it's a lot of the same stuff and they're in the same spots. Um, I think there's also a Quizlet on my um website and on my quizlets for all the muscles and stuff like that especially when you're doing semi tendinosis and membranosis and rectus like they all look the same especially on the model and so it's like if you're one off you don't know where you are so that poke the muscle thanks for playing christian was it fun um I I <clears throat> sorry hang on i took it whenever i was going through my nasm awesome stuff that's what i used to learn it's super helpful so was it fun yeah, I like it. It was fun. Okay, good. Good, good. Well, that is on there. And I thought it was funny. So, but don't forget to vote. 
said the humans, but thanks for hanging out, you guys. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. You can do it. I believe in you. Goodbye. I'm going to edit that out. I didn't say that. What is funny? All of you are laughing, and I do not understand. Three of you are some jokesters, and I... All of you are laughing. What are we laughing at? Yo. No, you have to tell me what's happening. Yo, what is this? If you're all laughing, then I'm missing something. Don't, what is it? I'm the weight. I think once one of us are laughing we all are laughing because we're all sleep deprived at least that's how i am so like i saw someone laugh so i started laughing and for no reason it's just you know when you're tired that's mm -hmm. at least what i am laughing is, about. That, is that true i can't hear you i'm so sorry i can't hear you What happened? So Marley's tired. I don't know if I believe her. What about Heather, huh? She can't even hold her water in her mouth. Hmm? I'm in my ASL Zoom, and so it's just a lot of different people. Christian? Y'all some little pieces of poop, okay? All right. Okay, I am going to finish this packet before I kill all of you. Okay.